All right, in the previous video, we actually looked at the Hamiltonian and derived it for a helium atom. Now we're gonna deal with a bigger atom, which is lithium, and we're actually gonna get the Hamiltonian for this multi-electron atom. Again, we have a proton cluster, the nucleus in the center, has a charge of plus three because there are three protons for lithium, and the protons do not move, they're treated as one body, so they have no kinetic energy, and the electrons all move around the nucleus, and they're moving, so they do have kinetic energy. And all the various distances are denoted here. Again, when you deal with determining the Hamiltonian for multi-electron atoms, drawing a free body diagram can be very, very beneficial. All right? And remember, the Hamiltonian is the sum of all the kinetic energy terms plus all of the attractive terms, plus all of the repulsive terms, okay? Now, remember, the potential energy terms, particularly the attractions, are given by this formula right here. Negative z times e squared over four pi epsilon zero times that particular radius, all right? Z is the charge of the nucleus. In this case, it's three because it's lithium. If it were carbon, it would be six. E is the fundamental charge of an electron or proton, it's its uh, positive value, which happens to be 1.602 times 10 to the minus 19th coulombs. Then we divide by this constant, 4 pi epsilon zero, and then divide by the particular radius. Remember that attractive terms are all negative. Let's determine what those are. What about for the first electron? It's separated from the nucleus by a distance r1. So the potential energy of attraction for electron one would be negative three e squared over four pi epsilon zero r1. What about for electron two separated from the nucleus by a distance r2? Its potential energy of attraction would be negative three e squared divided by four pi epsilon zero r2. Then what about the third electron separated from the nucleus by a distance r3? Its potential energy of attraction would be negative three e squared divided by four pi epsilon zero r3. Okay, and that takes care of the three attraction terms, one for each electron. Okay, now we have to deal with the repulsions. And with the repulsions, remember they're all positive, but there's no z term because the repulsions don't depend on the nucleus because they're between two electrons, each with a fundamental charge of one. So, the repulsion between electrons one and two separated by distance r12 is e squared over four pi epsilon zero r12. What's the repulsion between electrons one and three separated by a distance r13? It's gonna be e squared over four pi epsilon zero r13. And finally, what's the repulsion between electrons two and three separated by a distance r23? That, uh, that repulsion is gonna be e squared divided by four pi epsilon zero r23. Okay, and then all we do is we add up the kinetic energy terms, add up the attraction terms, and add up the repulsion terms, and that would be the Hamiltonian. So let's look at this. The Hamiltonian, therefore, for the lithium atom would be the sum of the three kinetic energy terms, which are really simple. That's just for each one, negative h bar squared over two times the mass of the electron, and then times the Laplacian operator, which is this upside down delta squared, for that particular electron, electron one. So the kinetic energy of the second electron would be plus negative h bar squared over two me times the Laplacian of electron two. And the kinetic energy of the third electron is going to be plus negative h bar squared over two me times the Laplacian operator for the third electron. And there's your three kinetic energy terms and there's always gonna be one per electron. Now let's add on the attractive potential energy terms. We've already determined those here, so they're all gonna be negative, so we're gonna have minus three e squared over four pi epsilon zero r1, minus the second one, three e squared over four pi epsilon zero r2, minus the last one, three e squared over four pi epsilon zero r3, okay? Again, all the terms up to this point are negative because kinetic energy and attractive forces are considered favorable forces. These ones over here, the repulsions, are going to be unfavorable, so they're all going to be positive, okay? So between electrons one and two, the repulsion potential energy is given by E squared over four pi epsilon zero R12. Between one and three, it's gonna be E squared over four pi epsilon zero R13. And then finally, between electrons two and three, the repulsion is given by E squared over four pi epsilon zero R23. 
So this is for three electrons, so this would be for a lithium atom. Um, you can definitely imagine if you get larger and larger, so say the next one would be, I think, beryllium, and then boron, then carbon, and so on and so forth, this is going to become a very, very long Hamiltonian, thus why you probably can't solve this analytically using the Schrodinger equation. All right? But the point is, is this is a very, very, it's, a, it's an easy process once you get the hang of it. It's just very mechanical and repetitive, okay? Add up all the kinetic energy terms, which are negative, then add up all the potential energy attraction terms, and then add up all the repulsion terms, which are positive, okay? And again, when you do these problems, the most helpful thing is to draw a free body diagram like this, because when you start to get many, many electrons, so four, five, six, and so on and so forth, it can be easy to forget some of the repulsive forces, all right? Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.